Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back again. To, uh, yesterday, we uh, stopped in a paragraph form or in listing and outlining. They will be continuing with part two of this chapter, which is sentence structure. Today's lecture or today's meeting is really important because we will be talking about clauses and about the complex sentence. Uh, and it's for, it is for me the most important sentence in the whole English. It is the most important sentence in the four English sentence structures, which were the, the simple sentence, the compound sentence. And right now we'll be talk, taking the complex sentence and there are also another kind of sentences, which is the complex compound sentence. Anyhow, after we have discussed the two sentence structures, which were simple and compound sentences, we will move to the next structure, which is the complex sentence. Before discussing this kind of structure, okay, you should have an orientation, some hints about clauses. What are clauses and how much uh, clauses do we have in English? Okay, what is a clause? First, a clause, it is just a group of words that contains a subject and a verb okay so it has a subject and a verb it must has a subject and a verb and a clause is different from a phrase so a clause must has a subject and a verb there are two types of clauses which are the independent clause and the dependent clause before we move and discuss them more specifically, okay? Let's read them and analyze them from just a meaning. When we say an independent clause, <clears throat> if you want to translate the word independent, okay? Or give it a definition. Independent means that it is something by itself. It doesn't depend, okay? It doesn't depend on something else. So it is free, it can stand alone. That's the meaning of independent. So obviously an independent clause, it is something complete by itself. It doesn't need anything else. In contrast, or at the other side of the spectrum, the dependent clause from the meaning, dependent means that it is something that depends on another thing, okay? So it needs something to push it, okay? Or to make it more stronger that it will have a complete meaning or something. So the independent is free by itself, it can stand alone, but the dependent clause from the meaning, it can't stand alone. Right now we'll be seeing, right now we'll be uh, seeing if this is true or not. And of course it is true. However, it is not that stark difference between the two types, okay? So memorize the following. They are not that different. There is not that big difference between them. The independent clause is just as same as the dependent clause. So we have an independent clause and a dependent clause. They are not that different. There is just one something that makes an independent clause a dependent clause. But the dependent has a subordinating conjunction with it. So whenever you bring an independent clause, okay, and you put an subordinating conjunction in it, it becomes a dependent clause. Right now we'll be uh, reversing this. We will have a dependent clause and we will remove the subordinated conjunction and we will have then a independent clause. Okay, here we have a dependent clause, which is before I went home. The word in red, it is a subordinated conjunction. Okay, we will be discussing them later. Before I went home, okay, when we remove the subordinated conjunction, which is before, it will become an independent clause. I went to home, okay? So before I went to home, it is a dependent clause. And when we remove the subordinated conjunction, we will get a independent clause. Here are some examples which are not required, all of them. Not all of them are required. We will only be focusing on the ones in red, as you can see in the PS note. Focus on the ones in red. 
we will be studying them in this book. So we have after, as long as, as much as, as soon as, and until we reach which and while. These are the most famous subordinating conjunctions in the English language. But in this book, we'll be focusing only on in the one in red, okay? So don't uh, confuse yourself. Anyhow, an independent clause is as same as a simple sentence, okay? The independent clause it is as same as a simple sentence. So when I tell you, if you remember what we have took or what we have taken in, the, in chapter one, we said that a simple sentence must contain a subject and must contain a verb. And it only and, uh, it, it is also has a complete thought or a complete idea. And also the same thing is the independent clause. An independent clause, we just right now, okay, we defined what is a clause generally without the independent and independent. We said that a clause must have a subject and a verb, okay? But when we say an independent clause, we give a definition for the word independent and we say that it has this unique, it can stand alone, it doesn't need anything else. So obviously, when we say both words, independent and clause, so we are mixing the something that can stand alone and we are mixing also that something must have a subject and a verb, okay? Then we have this definition, which is they both have a subject and a verb and a complete thought. So the independent clause is the same as the simple sentence. In contrast, a dependent clause doesn't express a complete idea, but it still has a subject and it still has a verb. The problem is that the dependent clause doesn't express a complete idea, okay? So the dependent clause needs a complement, as I just said, that dependent means that it needs something to make it complete. It is kind of weak, okay? And it needs something to make it perfect or complete. So here we need a complement, okay? Complement means mukammil, something to complete it, to create a complete thought, which is, in this case, the independent clause. Because of the fact that the dependent clause is weak and can't, st can't stand alone, and the independent clause, in contrast, it is really strong and it has a complete idea and it can't stand alone, actually, so we mix them together and we put them in a complete sentence. This complete sentence can have a meaning only if the dependent clause is joined with the independent clause. And this sentence is a complex sentence, okay? So when you join a dependent clause with an independent clause, you create what is called a complex sentence. We will be back to it soon, okay, later. Right now we'll be continuing with the clauses and the subordinated conjunction. So I think it's, it is obvious. Whenever there's a dependent clause, it doesn't have a complete idea and we must join an independent clause with it. So as a result, we will have a complete thought, okay? But the dependent clause cannot stand alone. It is really weak. It doesn't have, it doesn't have a complete idea. In English, there are a lot of subordinators, subordinators, okay? That can make a dependent clause. But in this chapter, we will be taking one kind only, which is called the adverb subordinators. Why do we call them adverb subordinators? Because they work the function, okay? Or they function as an adverb. They can modify an adverb or they can modify an adjective, and they also can modify a verb. Because of that, we call them adverse subordinators, and also they express, okay, and they describe time, okay? Note well that they are called adverb subordinators because their clause acts like an adverb. So it functions the adverb. Moreover, most of the adverb subordinators introduce time clauses. 
when I say the introduced time closes, I mean they describe time. They describe the duration of a time or an event, et cetera, et cetera. So the thing that you, mo you must focus on that they only describe time and they function as an adverb. These are the adverb subordinators and we also call them the time subordinators. Here are some time subordinators, which we have just uh, had a look on them. And I said that we must focus only on the red ones, okay? So here are they, after, as soon as, before, since, until, when, whenever, while. They also call time subordinators. After, I will go straight to bed after I finish writing this paragraph. She felt better as soon as she took the medicine. Okay, analyzing the first sentence, I will go straight to bed after I finish writing this paragraph. So at the time that I will finish writing this paragraph, I will go straight to bed. When someone asks you when you will go to bed, you answer him at the time I will finish writing this paragraph. So it gives you a time, a specific time, when I finish writing this paragraph, or when I took the medicine, I felt better, okay? Wait for a green light before you cross a street. And it has been a year since I left home. Okay, let's read whenever, because it is kind of different. Whenever I don't sleep well, comma, I feel sick the next day. We'll be back to this later that when you that it can that it can has it can have two structures about the comma that you can put a comma and in some cases you don't have to put a comma okay obviously there are two things you must know about the time subordinators first they can come as prepositions so you must focus on this and don't get mixed between the two things, between the time subordinators or the subordinators in generally that can occur as a place or can function as a preposition. They are not a lot, they are only three. Anyhow, not all of them, but some such as after, before, and until. These three subordinators can sometimes function as a preposition. But there is, of course, a difference, okay? There is, of course, a difference. To differentiate between the two conditions, you must know that after prepositions, okay? After prepositions comes a noun, okay? So whenever after or before or until has a noun after it, it is a preposition. It functions as a preposition. But when, when do it function? as a subordinator when we have a subject verb combination. When I say a subject verb combination, I mean that we have a sentence after it. Because as we said, a sentence, okay, or a clause without independent and dependent, we define the clause as it is, uh, yes, we said clause that has subject and a verb, okay? leaving the idea that it must has a complete thought because this is an that we don't care about it. But when I say a subject verb combination, I mean that it can be a sentence or a clause, okay? So when the subordinator comes and it has a subject verb combination after it, it is, it functions as a subordinator. But when there is a noun after it, then it functions as a preposition. Right now, we have some examples to make it more clear. Notice the following examples. After the accident, okay? After the accident, the accident is a noun. So obviously, after here is only a preposition because we have after the plus noun. After I had an accident, as you can see, it is the same kind of, uh, the same kind of sentence, but we made some little changes. We put what, uh, what we put, we put a subject and a verb combination, which, which are I, the subject is I, and had is the verb. So after I had, 
we have here a subject verb combination. So here, as a consequence, after functions as a subordinator or as an adverb subordinator. And so on with the, the following examples. Before class, okay? Before class, here before is only a preposition because it has a noun after it only. Before class begins, here before it functions as a subordinator. Why it functions as a subordinator? Because it has a subject verb combination. The subject is class, okay? Uh, before class begins, before here functions as a subordinator. Why it functions as a subordinator? Because class is the subject and begins is the verb. So here, as we said recently, when before or after or until comes after it, subject verb combination, it will function as a subordinator. And here we have another two examples and 10, 10 o'clock until the bell rings. Until at the first example is a preposition. The second example, it is a subordinator only. Because at the first example, we only have a noun, but in the second example, we have a subject verb combination. Okay, second, this is the second point about uh, time subordinators, you can use time clauses as time order transition signals. If you remember what we took uh, in the previous lecture, we said that you can use uh, any, time any time description as a time order transition signals. And we said that we have some time order transition signals, if you still remember them, which were first, second, third, fourth, and next, then, and uh, after that, okay? These are time order transition signals. But here it tells you that you can use, okay, the time closes as a time order transition, transition signals, such as before you start writing, look over the test. After you have answered the easy questions, go back and work on the hard ones. So as you can see also, before you start writing, it functions as an adverb. It describes a time. It tells you at this time, when you start writing, you should look over the test. So it tells you a specific time. After you have answered the easy question, in this time, when you answer the easy questions, go back and work on the hard ones, okay? This is all about the, uh, the time clauses, okay? Let's uh, I will be asking you all to mute yourselves. <clears throat> this is all about the time clauses. <clears throat> Mr. Khaled, Mr. Khaled. Ibrahim, what's the microphone? Okay. After finishing with clauses, we said that we will have some orientation about clauses. Right now, we are ready to deep in the complex sentence. At the first, we said that complex sentence is combined or it is composed of two things, the independent clause and a dependent clause. But first, what is the complex sentence? Okay, as I said, it is a sentence that contains one independent clause and one or more dependent clause. But note well that it can have two orders, okay? When I say two orders, I mean the place of comma. It is really obvious. Uh, if you know well, if you, or if you knew well, the clauses, the independent clause and the dependent clause with the, the subordinators, it is really easy about, it, is, it will be really easy about the complex sentence because the complex sentence is only an independent clause that is joined with a dependent clause. So it is not that something hard. When I say about the place of comma, it has two conditions. 
if the independent clause, okay, that doesn't have a subordinator conjunction, if it comes first, we don't use a comma. For instance, I ran home while it was raining. I ran home. This is an independent clause. Why it is an independent clause? Because it doesn't have a subordinating conjunction. While it was raining, this is the dependent clause, which came second. The, the independent clause came first. Then we have the dependent clause. If the dependent clause comes first, we'll be using the same sentence, okay? As, a, as an example, if the dependent clause comes first, use a comma, the same example. While it was raining, we put a comma, then we continue and say, I ran home. So in case of the comma of putting it, you have two conditions. If the independent clause comes first, don't put a comma. But if it comes second, you must put a comma before it, after the dependent clause. And focus on the comma because putting it in a wrong way will make you lose marks, okay? Okay. After we discuss the clauses and we define them and we also took the complex sentence, right now we'll be taking some mistakes or not some mistake, it is only one mistake, that will face you in writing complex sentences. Because before this, we took the compound sentence and we had for it two mistakes or two errors, which were run on and comma supplies. Right now, after we took the complex sentence, okay, we will be taking one mistake that will face you. And it is really, really easy. Actually, we have just mentioned it, okay? It is really easy. Anyhow, now we are going to talk about another error, which called fragment. From the name also, we'll be analyzing right now and defining the word fragment, PS, okay? The word fragment means a part of something. Do you remember what we said at the beginning of the lecture? We said that the dependent clause, it is weak and it depends on another thing. And also we said that it is not a complete thought, all right? Remember the incomplete thought? So obviously a fragment is just another name of the dependent clause, just like this. So the fragment, it is just another name for the dependent clause. Whenever you see a dependent clause comes alone without any additions, it is just a fragment because it is a piece of something. It is not complete. It doesn't have any complete idea. Technically, fragments are supposed to be easy for you as we have just discussed the dependent clauses, okay? We said this before, that the dependent clause doesn't represent a complete idea. And also fragments, they don't represent a complete idea. They only represent a part of something. Before it started to rain and you put a period, as soon as I saw my brother and you put a period, you stop. When, I, when he entered and you stop, you put a period. Okay, these examples make you ask many questions, such as what happened next? Why did you stop? Okay, then what happened? Before it started to rain and he stopped. Yani, imagine someone talks to you okay, in English and then he tells you before it started to rain and just, and he stopped. You'll, like, you'll be surprised and say like, and you will tell him, Yes, before it started to rain, what happened next? There is something missing. You didn't give me a complete idea. Or if he told you as soon as, my, as, soon as I saw my brother and he stopped without completing his sentence. Okay, why did you stop? Where is the, where is the compliment? You didn't give me a complete idea. This is the fragment. When you, when you don't have a complete idea or when you write a sentence and you don't convey a complete idea to the reader. Because simply, they are not conveying a complete, a complete thought. These are fragments. They, then they don't give the reader a complete thought. As you can see here, as, a, as soon as I saw my father, when he entered, when he entered and you just stopped. Okay, what happened next? It is, it is a piece of something. It is not complete 
is not a complete sentence. Lastly, a fragment cannot be a sentence by itself. This is really obvious and really cl clear because it is a dependent clause. And previously we said a dependent clause cannot be a sentence by itself because a sentence, a complete sentence must has uh, must have a complete idea. We took this in chapter one. A complete sentence, it starts with a capital letter, it ends with a period, it must, it must have a subject and a verb, and also it must have a complete idea. So a fragment or a dependent clause cannot be a complete sentence or a sentence by itself. Okay, in order to solve this issue, we add an independent clause, which is really obvious. We have just discussed this. With it, we will have a complete idea. And as a consequence, a complete sentence. So we only have one solution, okay? You can, or maybe you have two solutions, but the most uh, clear one, the most correct one that you have to put an independent clause. Before it started to rain, comma, she went home. This, right now, we will have a complete idea that before it started to rain, she went home. Okay, I understand right now that there is, there are two events occur. It was raining, she went home, okay? Or the second example, I closed the door as soon as I saw my product. And right now you can see that we didn't use a comma because the independent clause came first. So there is no need of a comma. The third example, when he entered, the all stood up using a comma after the dependent clause. So fragments are really easy. They are a dependent clause alone without having any complement. In order to solve this problem, we add a independent clause to, co to complete the idea or to make a complete idea. And as a consequence, we make a complete sentence because a complete sentence must be a complete idea. We took this in chapter one. Okay, this is a picture summarizes the three previous sentences. A simple sentence has one independent clause. And we said this previously that uh, a simple sentence, it is another name of the independent clause. It was a sunny day, raise your hand to ask question. Also to remind you, we say that a simple sentence is called a simple sentence because it only has one verb and one subject, okay? A compound sentence has two or more independent clauses joined by a comma and a coordinated conjunction. Don't mix between the coordinated conjunctions and the subordinated conjunctions. Each one has its function and each one has its structure and each one has its places of commas. Lastly, a complex sentence that we have just took it or we have just taken it has one independent and one or more dependent clauses. A comma is needed when a dependent clause comes before an independent clause, and we just explain that. While the meat is cooking, comma, prepare the sauce. Prepare the sauce while the meat is cooking. First, we will have a comma because the dependent clause came first. The second example, we won't be having a comma because the independent clause came first. Okay, this is a practice for you to practice by yourself. The following paragraph has a combination of the three sentences, types, simple, compound, complex. There are five compound sentences here that will be two simple sentences are joined together with a comma and a coordinated conjunction. And we also have three complex ones. Okay, you need to find them by yourself. You can send them on uh, the Telegram group, and we will be sending the right answers. Okay, after, after we discuss uh, complex sentences, we will be taking capitalization and punctuation. Right now, we'll be having another four rules. Okay, another four rules for capitalization, and another four rules for commas. We took in chapter one. Uh, six rules of capitalization. Right now, we'll be taking uh, four extra rules. 
We capitalize the first letter in a word in the names of specific structures, such as buildings, roads, and bridges. These are famous structures, okay, like the White House, the Hilton Hotel, the Kremlin is like the White House that is in Russia, or highway, state road, etc., etc. And it is the, the same thing if we said uh, like Burj al Watan, okay, or Al Watan Tower, we will capitalize it. This is referring to Gaza buildings. Or if we said, um, what also we have famous here, the Islamic University of Gaza, the Azhar University, all of the famous buildings or, or all of the uh, specific structures, okay, are capitalized, even banks. You can also capitalize banks because it is really famous, like the Islamic Bank or the Palestinian Bank. You capitalize it. Names of specific organizations such as business, schools, and clubs. Okay, I think here it means yeah, organizations such as the United Nations or the WHO, which is the World Health Organization. We also capitalize. Uh, I think this is clear. Uh, the ninth thing, which is names of the days, months, holidays, and special time periods. But remember, not the names of seasons. So we don't capitalize spring, summer, and autumn, and also uh, winter. And autumn is also fall. We only capitalize days, months, holidays, and special time periods. Like Monday, January, February, Ramadan, it is a special time period for Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Fitr, uh, al al all of these are capitalized because they are special time periods. In New Year, Year's Day, we also capitalize it because it is a special time or it is a holiday. So whatever is famous between people and all the people know it, anything you find it is famous and a lot of people know it, around the world or around Gaza, okay, you capitalize it because it is famous. Geographic areas such as the Middle East, South Asia, the Southwest, etc., Eastern Europe, but not compass directions. Okay, we don't capitalize the directions such as North alone. If it comes alone, we don't capitalize it. If I told you drive South, for two miles and turn west, we don't capitalize the south and the west. But in the geographic areas, such as Middle East, we capitalize east because it is it occurred in a geographic area. Okay, but uh, if it come alone, we don't capitalize it. This is all about capitalization. I think they are clear. They are more easier from the six that we took before because they all talk about the same object or the same subject, which is famous places or famous things that are, that are well known for people. Okay, as we took, right now we have took, uh, right now we have taken 10 rules of capitalization. Here are two paragraphs between your hands uh, that have some capitalization errors, okay? You have practice. You read, you observe, you look, and you find and edit them by yourself. You can send them also as a Telegram group. Here is another paragraph that, have, that has some capitalization errors. Okay, these are another extra four rules for commas, and we will be finishing with it. And actually, we don't have only, we have only five minutes, so we'll be talking quickly. Okay, you use a comma after listing order and time order signals. Expect them, okay, accept them. We discussed this before. First and second, all of these stuff, you put a comma after it, okay, after them, but except then, we don't put a comma except them. Uh, we don't put a comma after them. So you can go and revise the listing order and time order transition signals. You must put a comma after all of them, except them. Don't put a comma after them. 
The second condition, you use a comma before coordinating conjunctions in a compound sentence. And we took this. And we said, if you don't use a comma before a coordinated conjunction, you are making a run-on sentence, okay? A run-on error, which you are compounding two simple sentences without a comma and without a coordinated conjunction. Some people like to travel, comma, and others like to have an adventure. Cook the steak over high, over high heat for six minutes, comma, but don't let it burn. So focus before coordinated conjunctions in a compound sentence. Also remember that we discussed uh, or and and we said that these two don't use, don't need to put a comma before them in a simple sentence. And when it, join, when it joins uh, two positive things in a simple sentence, we don't put a comma before it. And also, or when it joins two negative things or two negative ideas in a simple sentence, we don't put a comma before it. Exceptions, sometimes writers omit this comma in a very short sentences. Dogs park and cats mew. Okay, turn left and drive one block. Okay, it tells you that in short sentences, you don't need to put a comma. Although these two sentences are compound sentences because you focus or you note that dogs are a subject and park is a verb. So here we have a simple sentence. Cats mew, cats are subjects and mew is a verb. So obviously we have two simple sentences that must be joined with a coordinated conjunction and a comma. But here, because it is really short sentence, we didn't put a comma. But for me, okay, it tells you sometimes. So uh, don't consider it as real. For me, I always put commas. In a complex sentence, use a comma in a complex sentence when a dependent adverb clause comes before an independent clause. We just discussed this and we repeated it maybe for five times. When the Dependent clause comes first, use a comma after it, then you put the independent clause. But if it contrasted, if the independent clause came first, then use a comma, okay? After you take the pizza out of the oven, okay, this is the dependent clause, you put a comma, and after it, you put the independent clause. But if it came first, the independent clause, don't use a comma. The fourth rule to separate items in a series, okay? A series is three or more things. It is three or more things. When they are two things, we don't put a comma. Such as, this may be words or phrases, okay, etc. Groups of words. One dog, one cat, two goldfish, a bird, and four humans left at our house. I think this is clear. We took it in school that we must separate the things uh, the items in a series, we must separate them. So this is really clear. Every morning I get up early, run a mile, take a shower, eat breakfast, and feed my pets. Whenever it is more than two things, we, we separate it using commas. Okay? Okay, these are also uh, two paragraphs for you to practice and to put commas on them. You can also send them uh, at the Telegram group. Uh, so thank you for joining us. We have finished the, we have finished chapter three. And good luck. I wish you all good luck. And it is really, it is really important lecture that was today because we talked a lot of important things. So thank you and I wish you good luck.